So the primary motivation for most cyber criminals is very simple. It's money. And they're after making that money in a variety of ways. And they can use your computer or your information or any digital asset in so many different clever ways to make money. Sometimes it's digital currency, so crypto money. In fact, crypto criminality is now also on the rise. And I would say that is the absolute number one motivation for most cyber criminals out there. Furthermore, there are other types of organizations who have different motivations for cyber attacks. Specifically, nation state sponsored cyber attackers who might be geared at stealing important intellectual property like the schematics of a navy ship for example or the information of a fighter jet the world's most advanced fighter jet uh, developed by Lockheed Martin more than 10 years ago had such a data breach into the program so they actually had some of the information stolen because of another nation wishing to develop the same type of fighter jet but not wishing to invest the billions of dollars in R&D, rather just investing in having their hacking teams steal that information for them. So that is the second motivation for a lot of cyber attacks out there which are targeting defense companies and government agencies, and that would be state-sponsored cyber espionage. In the commercial sense, the entities that are highly targeted by cyber criminal individuals traditionally have been financial institutions and any organization that has a vast amount of financial, financial data, credit card information, but recently we're also seeing the rise of attacks on the healthcare providers. This is because healthcare data and data sets, that means the inclusive uh, uh, names, dates of birth, maiden names, uh, the year that uh, the city you are born uh, features about your body and your personality. These data sets are now becoming valuable in a variety of frauds. Social security fraud in the United States, pension fraud, other types of frauds, even uh, money laundering frauds. So the criminals are also targeting healthcare providers for that healthcare information. But still, number one, it's usually the financial institutions. We're also seeing attacks against the smaller organizations, small to medium enterprises, that might actually have smaller databases where maybe it's a few thousand names or a few thousand credit card numbers. That's also an interesting target for a cyber criminal. So the nature of cyber criminal attacks is that they often are transnational. They cross borders and there are certain countries in the world where cyber criminals still enjoy either the protection of the country they're in or simply the lack of proper cyber criminal laws and law enforcement mechanisms. Hopefully in the next few years we will get more collaboration between law enforcement agencies and higher cyber crime laws and norms of behavior between different countries. In the past few years, for example, while uh, China has been behind many bold attacks on American corporates, for a brief period of about three years during the Obama administration, there was actually a time that there was an understanding between President Xi and Obama on the norm of behavior between China and the United States and seizing some of the cyber espionage campaigns. So there was some form of consensus arrived at for a brief period of time, which shows that it is possible between nation states to arrive at such understandings, even the two biggest rivals. However, these things also change. Now with a different political climate, there is more incentive than ever before for nation states to attack one another or to conduct cyber espionage operations. When it comes to the way that we prosecute cyber criminals, I believe it's time for countries to collaborate even more closely. European nations and the Europol have recently collaborated vastly with the FBI and the American uh, prosecutors in order to bring to justice quite a few organized cyber criminal um, leaders, gang leaders. With that is only the beginning, however, and there's still more work that needs to be done. So when I take a look at the future of cybersecurity, when we try to look ahead five, ten years from now, to me what's most important and the key message that I want to share uh, today is that it's not only going to be about the technology, the new types of firewalls or antivirus engines that we'll have in place. It's actually going to be about the human element in the equation. And that's, uh, first of all, the hundreds of security decisions that we all make every day 
on our devices and our phones, and hopefully we can make better, smarter security decisions in the future. But it's also about the security talent in the workforce. And I'm a big believer in the friendly hacker community, where I'm hopeful many of that security talent can come from.